In Wisconsin, there's a small city on Lake Michigan, well known by the locals as being the coolest spot in the state. This reputation was not contrived during some drink marathon at a local dive bar, nor is it a Wisconsin myth or legend. It's the honest truth. And I dare say, the best way to discover this truly unique, only in Wisconsin wonder, is to head there with us now. Hey sightseers, Sightseeing Sally here. I'm with Marty and Mocha, as you can see. We are in a park, but this isn't just any old park. This park happens to be in a town, or more rightly so, a city that's known as the coolest city in Wisconsin. At least that's what we were told growing up. Right, Marty? Yep. Because what makes this park so special besides being in the coolest city in Wisconsin is that this park happens to be in our hometown. Yep, we decided to show you around the town we grew up in. Say hello to Two Rivers, Wisconsin, the city that's cooler by the lake. With a population of 11,270, Two Rivers is located 39 miles southeast of Green Bay on the shores of Lake Michigan. For those of you wondering how Two Rivers got its name, that's because there's actually two rivers here, the East Twin and the West Twin. Originally called Neshota, a Native American word that means twin rivers, Two Rivers is located at the confluence of two actual rivers, the Michicot River, which is now known as the East Twin River, and the Neshota River, now known as the West Twin. Often referred to as Trivers by people in the outlying communities, Two Rivers is known throughout Wisconsin as being the coolest city on the lake. The city is so cool that years ago there was even a billboard campaign promoting Two Rivers as the coolest spot in Wisconsin. Which means not only will you get to see the coolest city in Wisconsin, you'll also get the inside scoop. As Marty and I are pretty well adversed as to what has changed and what has stayed the same over the last 40 years or so, starting with this park. A local hangout that's been around since at least the 1930s, Neshota Park and Beach is one of the best parts about living in Two Rivers and a major reason tourists flock to the town in summer. In front of me you can see the bathrooms. That's not new, but the mural painted on the side of it is. So new in fact that it's only been around since 2022. But I know you didn't come here to hear about the bathroom <laughs> situation here. It was only important to me because I had to go. But anyways, this park I spent a lot of time in as a kid. I lived not too far from here. At least it was in biking distance. And I can tell you that a lot has changed in this park. For instance, that really cool clown swing that we talked about in our video that we did on the hottest town in New Mexico. That used to be right over here. Now they have this play contraption thing for kids that is probably a lot safer, but probably nowhere near as fun. At one time, there was also a curly slide, much like the one that we saw in Bonduel, and a super tall slide that gave you the heebie-jeebies when you got to the top. But those, sadly, have all been replaced by more kid-proof playground equipment. That field, by the way, is known as Walsh Field, and it's the location of where Two Rivers always set off their fireworks on the 4th of July. Whether it still is, I don't know. But maybe if someone from the local area catches this and they know, they can let us know in the comment section below. Looking around though, I can see there's one thing around here that hasn't changed. Known as Rock City, I guarantee pretty much anybody that's grown up here in Two Rivers has either had a senior picture taken here, a family portrait, or a wedding photo session here on this well-known pile of rocks. Interestingly enough, 
there is a story about how these rocks came to be. During the late 1930s, the city, in an attempt to beautify a lily pond that had been part of the park, hauled in these huge rocks in an attempt to create a cascading falls between two pools of water. The design, however, ended up being flawed, and the pond stagnated, creating the perfect breeding ground for mosquitoes. As a solution, the city decided to eliminate the ponds by filling them in with sand from the nearby beach. Later, after a storm caused a washout along the banks of the East Twin River, many of the rocks were removed to help repair the riverbank. Regardless though, it is a really nice park for families to come out and hang out at. By the way, back in the day, this circle here was once the location of mischief and possibly some underage beverage consumption. <laughs> Not that I would know anything about that <gasps> by those who lived here. And it was pretty much guaranteed that anybody that had a cool old car would be sitting here trying to do burnouts, showing that they could get posi traction <laughs> with the tires on those cars. Again, not that I would know anything about that. Funny story. And then we'll move on because there's a lot more here to Trivers, or Trivers as anybody outside of town refers to the city. And that is, back in the day, my parents had this little, oh, I would say it was probably Robin's Egg Blue Escort. It was a four-door and it was a stick shift. And because I wanted to be just as cool as the cool kids with the old, ratty, dumpy looking cars doing burnouts, I would used to bring the old escort down here and I may have popped the clutch a few times and left a little bit of rubber on the road myself. You didn't do anything like that, did you, Marty? Absolutely not. Never. Would you swear on a Bible? <laughs> Maybe not, but. Take a lie detector test? <laughs> no, I plead the fifth. Moving along. Since Marty's going to remain tight-lipped about all his young childhood shenanigans, I thought I'd bring you down to the beach so you could see exactly why Two Rivers is considered the coolest city in all of Wisconsin. Typically, you'll find that between the north side of town and here on the lake, it can be a difference as much as 20 degrees or so, especially when the breeze, like it is today, blowing off the lake. Being billed as the coolest spot in Wisconsin is no accident. Geographically speaking, with the exception of Door County, Two Rivers is the only community that jets out into Lake Michigan as far as it does on this side of the lake. Basically, it's like the town has its own built-in air conditioner. Because of this, along with the fact that Two Rivers does a really awesome job of grooming its beach, Neshota Beach is known among beach aficionados as being one of the best beaches on all of Lake Michigan. Having grown up here, I can attest to that. Back in the day, they didn't always groom the beach and you'd come down here and there'd be piles of ill wives and the beach would just stink. Now, it's one of the cleanest beaches I've seen in all of America. Which is why on a day like today, when it's nearly 90 degrees inland, there's so many people hanging out here at Two Rivers Beach. And just like Kiwani, Wisconsin, they have a Coast Guard station here in Two Rivers, along with a lighthouse marking the entrance to the river and the harbor. If you look off in the distance, right over there is a slice of beach. That beach on hot summer days, we'd be down there playing, making sandcastles, digging holes, trying to find our way to China. <laughs> we were too young to know any better. And then as I grew older, well, I realized that there was more to life than just that little slice of beach. And so I'd find myself hanging out here at good old Neshota Park. I met many a teenage hoodlum right over there as my father would often refer to the long-haired, greasy-looking guys I'd bring home. Ah, the memories. 
and the stories I could tell, but those I'm going to leave for you in the past. This walkway, by the way, is something that's changed since I was a kid. Years ago, there was no walkway, and the road that is now one way going past the beach used to be a two-way street. So you have a lot of traffic going back and forth in front of the beach because as I mentioned earlier, this was where you would come with your cool old car and do drag style antics. And if you were a guy, you were looking for those hot chicks. And if you were a girl, you were looking for those hot dudes in those cool old cars. And then back in the day, you used to be able to come up here and grab yourself a snow cone or a drumstick or a push up or even a fudge sickle. Well, I see some things haven't changed. People still like to drive on by the old beach. All this reminiscing about the beach and ice cream treats has got me going like, hmm, am I gonna get ice cream today? But speaking of ice cream, did you know Two Rivers is the birthplace of the ice cream sundae? That's right, not only is the coolest city in all of Wisconsin the home to one of the best beaches there is, it is also the birthplace of the ice cream sundae. Or at least that's what we claim. There is a town in New York that has tried to lay claim to that distinction. However, we are in Wisconsin and we know dairy like nobody else. So I'd be willing to bet that if anybody was going to create the ice cream sundae, it would have had to have been in Wisconsin. Besides, who really is going to dispute it when you got a sign right here saying, birthplace of the ice cream sundae? According to local lore, the invention of the ice cream sundae dates back to 1881, when George Hallower asked Ed Burner the owner of a drugstore and soda fountain in town, for some chocolate sauce to be poured over the top of his dish of ice cream. Word of this new concoction spread, and soon it became a special sold at Burner's for a nickel, but only on Sundays. As the story goes, a 10-year-old girl came in during the week one time and insisted on having that stuff on top, saying they could pretend it was Sunday. Thus, the Sunday was born here in Two Rivers. Speaking of, this building here is the Washington House on the National Register of Historic Places. This is where that iconic ice cream sundae birth can be replicated. Right inside here is where you all can get your own version of the Two Rivers Sunday. Unbeknownst to the outside world, Two Rivers happens to be home to a number of uniquely designed homes, including this one a Frank Lloyd Wright home. Named for the subdivision in which it stands, Still Bend, this house was built for Bernard and Fern Schwartz after they saw a special feature in Life magazine entitled Eight Houses for Modern Living. Now on the National Register of Historic Places, Wright originally designed this home with a different family in mind, the Blackburns of Minneapolis. Though the Blackburns never followed through with Wright's design, the Schwartzes, having seen the plans in Life magazine, decided to contact Wright on their own. Wright obliged, making a few modifications to the original design. Besides the uniquely styled homes here in town, you'll also find something unusual here in the cemetery. An Egyptian-style crypt. Designed at a time when Egyptian revival and Art Deco were the rage, this mausoleum is one of the most interesting cemetery pieces to have been built in all of Wisconsin. Made of granite and incorporating elements reminiscent of ancient Egyptian temples, the Vosshart Mausoleum cost a total of $17,500 in 1914, which in today's dollars equates to $532,222.25. Though you wouldn't know from looking at it, 16 members of the Vosshart family are interred inside. Fascinating. Who would have thought that this existed here? 
The thing about Two Rivers is, besides being the coolest city in Wisconsin, having one of the best beaches on Lake Michigan, and being birthplace of the ice cream sundae, and mine and Marty's old stomping grounds, is that there is a lot of history in this Lake Michigan town. Like the Galecki building here on the corner. That's also on the National Register of Historic Places. And then there's Schrader's Department Store, one of the oldest department stores still operating in the entire United States. Family owned and operated since 1891. I believe they're on their fourth generation of family members operating it. Then of course there's all the old churches that are still standing here. The one behind me is St. John's. There's one down the road over that way that used to be known as St. Luke's. Now I believe it's some sort of wedding and event venue. Something outsiders may not realize is how industry within the city has changed drastically over the years. Though now mainly a bedroom community supported by tourism, Two Rivers used to be a major producer of manufactured goods. From boats to nets to Nesco roasters, plus a whole lot more, manufacturing was once the main driver of economic success in this town. This over here, you couldn't even see the lake before. I mean, Hamilton's buildings were so tall and, and they just engulfed all this property over here. Yeah, I remember walking home from school as a kid and you would go underneath because Hamilton's had these two huge walkways that went across the street. So both buildings were connected from that walkway and it was almost like going through a tunnel and we would yell. Because Cars it, would blow their horns, race it, the engines, all yeah, kinds of stuff. Yeah, because it echoed underneath there. So it was just really kind of neat. And it's just so weird seeing it gone. It's just like... Acres of property here it sat on and now it's all empty. All on the river. Interestingly enough, this corner has seen its share of changes as well. Way back when, I'm talking years and years ago, there used to be an old Mars restaurant there. Then they tore that down and built a Hardee's. And now, as you can see, that's no longer there. And they have this building, which for the longest time held a family video. And then over in this section here where you got the Sweet Fire tobacco, that was a Papa Murphy's. And then over yonder beyond this construction zone where you see it says Cool City Brewing Company, that used to be a bank. First it was Citizens Bank and then it became, I think, Wells Fargo. And then, I don't know, it went through a series of changes. It might have even been Norwest Bank for a while. I just know that used to be where the bank was in town or at least one of like three or four banks here in town. And then here where they've got all this construction going on was considered Central Park where you'd come and listen to band concerts during the summer. Apparently they're going to modernize it and transform it into this here. It's pretty interesting to come back to your hometown and see everything that's changed. If you look over there you can see that building with the flag on it. That's the community house. That's where they used to hold teen dances back when I was in high school. And then of course they had a bowling alley in there and a basketball court and it's just always been a part of the community place for people to gather and participate in various things. By the way, this is what this area looked like back in 1990. We had our yearbook signing here. Big event. Well, big for us here in small town Two Rivers because of course when you're growing up here, even though it had a population of, oh, I think back then it was like 12,000, it was considered small by many of us because of course when you're a teenager and you think there's nothing to do here, you think the town is small. Here's something that all these years I never noticed was on the side of this building. Do you see that faded mural advertisement? Walked past here, drove by here, how many times? Probably more times than you can count to, and never once saw that there. Wow. 
unreal. Speaking of unreal, this building here, or this part of the building where they got the Sick Addiction Tattoo Piercing Company, this was once a vacuum sales. Wow, things really have changed. That's not the only thing that's changed in the downtown. Locals may recall a time when Two Rivers ran a billboard campaign proclaiming its status as the coolest spot in Wisconsin. Years ago, when driving into town, there used to be a billboard welcoming you that said, Two Rivers, cooler by the lake. I think it may have even said at one time, coolest city on the lake. But don't quote me on that. Obviously, as you can see, that billboard campaign no longer exists today. What's your favorite Two Rivers memory, Marty? It's got to be when Hardy's was over there when I was a kid. You get a Happy Meal. I don't know if that's McDonald's thing, a Happy Meal, but one of them value meals, and you'd get the little red NAS or little white and orange NASCAR matchbox car in it. If I remember right from my Hardy's days, I think they were called kids' meals. But don't quote me on that. As you can see, I didn't make a career out of working at Hardy's, so <gasps> whatever I learned from that back then probably went. And then of course, no trip to the coolest city in Wisconsin would be complete without a stop at only the best sub shop around. A local favorite, they've been serving up subs since 1978. And I've been eating them probably just as long. Our next stop on this tour of the coolest city in Wisconsin brings us to the point where Washington Street intersects with 27th. Where these condos now sit used to be the location of Washington High School. But as you can see, there is nothing here currently to indicate that there was even ever a high school here. No doubt, we're not the only ones who remember things here in Two Rivers differently. I'm sure there are plenty of you out there who have your own stories to tell, which, by the way, feel free to share them in the comment section below. We'd love to hear what your favorite places were here in Two Rivers that no longer exist or things that you remember that have changed pretty much anything as it relates to Two Rivers is fair game. So we want to hear from you. We want to know what's changed. What do you like now? What do you, what's your favorite part about Two Rivers now? That's a good one too. I'd love to hear, hear some good things about Two Rivers and what makes it your favorite town to live in or visit. Who remembers when that little red and green building used to be a gas station? Ooh, ooh, I do. I actually had a friend there who worked there during high school and it was the type of gas station that even back then they would come out, pump your gas for you, clean your windows, you know, that sort of thing that you don't really see much nowadays. And then what's now pick and save, that used to be the old Bill's Red Owl. And then way over there yonder where the mobile gas station is, that was a Rusty's where you could get ice cream. Go figure that I would know where any of the old ice cream places used to be. What we're coming up to now is the Roger Street Fishing Village and Museum. And off to my right, is the Suzy Q, an old fishing trawler. Because for those of you who don't know, much of Two Rivers early history was steeped in the fishing industry. And interestingly enough, some of the families whose early ancestors made their way to Two Rivers and started in the fishing industry here are still in it today. I remember when we were kids, just wee ones, you know, probably, six, seven, maybe eight years old, we would stand up on the bridge over there and watch the fishing trawlers come in at the end of the day with their catch. Because from the vantage point of being up over on the bridge, if you waited long enough, you could see them dumping the fish off of the back deck here into whatever it was that was waiting to catch the fish that they had caught. By the way, for those of you who enjoy fresh white fish or smoked chubs, 
Suzy Q Fish Market has always been the best place around to get what you enjoy most. That fresh fish with a side of power sauce salad. Just kidding. Somebody's really going to town with that thing. Before we move on from this area, Marty's got something he wants to point out for you. This is an artifact here. When you think of drones, you think of them things that kids are flying and adults. This is a World War II drone that they used to shoot down for practice out here in Lake Michigan. Because I remember him talking about recovering these in some of the fishing nets from the commercial fishermen here. And this is one of them that was caught in a net and it's been sitting here since, I, at least I know, at least 20 years. Wow, that's pretty fascinating. I wouldn't have guessed. I had no idea and I was going to ask him, how would you know that? Well, he answered it before he even had a chance to ask. Start a new segment called Just Ask Marty. He jokes, but I think a lot of people here on YouTube would find that totally fascinating. Speaking of fascinating, it's been a real trip diving into our hometown's history and discovering some of the things that make this small city so unique. Not to mention all the changes that have occurred since we grew up here. So much has changed. I could spend hours sharing my memories and what's different in the coolest spot in Wisconsin and still not cover them all. As cool as it was to escape the heat and come down to the coolest city in Wisconsin, I know inevitably someone's gonna be like, why didn't you show such and such place? Frankly, it's just a little overwhelming to come back and see everything that's changed. Hope you enjoyed what we did show you. Maybe it even sparked some of your own reminiscing or the desire to experience Two Rivers yourself. Until next time, this is Sightseeing Sally.